Hi, my name's Tom at Ledgemere Heritage Farm here in Southern Maine. What I've got in front of me is a 60 inch Citrex finish mower. And if you're anything like me, when you want to go out and get your stuff mowed, you just want to hook on and go. And I can tell you from experience that doing that without going through everything and tightening everything down, making sure everything's lubricated properly before you use it, is going to end up biting you in the butt at some point. So today we're going to take a few minutes and just go uh, stem to stern, if you will, on this, this mower. And hopefully this will save you some discouragement later on down the line. One of the first things you want to do before you start is to clean everything off, especially if you've been mowing through poison ivy or poison sumac or any of those things. So you can take a leaf blower or a garden hose or something and just kind of get all the stuff off at first. And that'll make it a little bit better to, to work with. Uh, one of the most important things that you can take care of on your mower or any product that you own that has some sort of a gearbox on it is the gearbox itself. You want to make sure these, these bolts, however many there are that hold the gearbox onto the frame of the, the attachment are always good and snug and secure. If it doesn't come with nylon lock nuts on it, it's not a terrible idea to, to get some and, and put them on. I, I will tell you from experience that if this starts wobbling at all, it doesn't take a whole lot of time for it to basically disintegrate and then you've got an expensive repair on your hands. One of my favorite and I, I don't have a, I don't have a sponsor for any of these things so these are just uh, things that I, I found that work really well and one of them is the WD-40 Specialist Dry Lube with Teflon and what I do with that is I will lubricate this drive shaft and I'll get to that in a moment before I put it together some gear oil this is a uh, ADW90 there's there's different different weights but this one's pretty common I got this at tractor supply but you can get it anywhere pretty much even the hardware store a couple of wrenches these are adjustable wrenches you may want a socket set uh, something like that definitely some shop towels you may want some uh, rubber gloves if you're going to get into the grease too much and a grease gun now I don't have any sponsors like I said but uh, I will put a plug in for the lock and loop this right here is just one super handy little device. It just goes on the end and, and, and uh, it just makes it really easy to, to get your, your grease fitting off the, the end. A lot of times you'll find that you've got that on there and it's under pressure and you have to get a screwdriver to pop it off. The, the one time this is not handy though is like if you're trying to get up into a clutch housing or something on a tractor, then uh, you need something else. But most of the time this works really, really well. So we'll just start with eyeballing everything and make sure everything looks like it's all here. A lot of times when you're mowing, these little spring clips right here will end up popping off and then you, you're driving around and you've got two wheels or three wheels and all these little spacers right here are really expensive to, to uh, replace. So you want to make sure that everything's on there good and snug before you even start doing anything. So you just want to lay eyeballs on it for lack of better terms. You may want to buy some lock nuts, they're not terribly expensive. And these come with spacers in it, so you really can't over tighten this one. But these, these and bush hogs really vibrate a, a, a lot when they're being used, so it doesn't take a lot for these, these things to start loosening up on you. The last thing you want to do is be out mowing somewhere and then you know something falls off and then you can't get back. You're a real bear to, to haul back when pieces missing off. Like I said, you may want a socket set. Some people hate adjustable wrenches. You also want to go down on your, your uh, swivels here, on your caster wheels, and make sure those are on good and tight. And usually right around the axle is where you're going to find those. One of the biggest pain in the butt grease fittings to get at, but unfortunately you still have to grease it even though you can't get to it, is on the universal joint where the drive shaft connects to the gearbox and they may be different mine has tended to be mostly the same and there's some usually some sheet metal pan screws or some sort of screw that will hold this back shield here to this cup and you can see part of the, the shield here well you have to be able to get to that grease fitting way back there and so you can see when I turn this, this coupler here, there's a grease fitting in back that you have to get to. 
So you have to remove all this first, and this is important that you don't skip this step. There's a little grease fitting here, and all that does is puts grease on the shield, so if the shield will telescope in and out right there, but you still have to get that one in there. And it looks like in order to get that, that correctly, I'm gonna have to take out those last two bolts in there that hold this shield onto the gearbox itself because invariably what's happened is the angle of that grease fitting is angled off towards the back. So I've got to take this off as well. One saying we used to have in the military was that safety devices were there to protect the equipment from you, not you from the equipment. Well, in this case, that's not necessarily true. This is to save the manufacturer's liability when some genius decides to put their hand in there while the PTO is still turning. Shields. I'm gonna tell you to be safe and put everything back when you're done. I'm also gonna tell you not to put your hand in it while it's going and make sure you shut your power take off, off, disengage it before you get off the machine. On these machines here, they've been cool enough to put a spring on it, which is similar to the one that goes on the front, but it goes on the back, and that just makes access to this so much easier. But you can't really get to it with that shield on, so you have to take all that off in order to get at it. And then you're going to want to take your rag and Clean all this debris and grease, all the stuff off that. So once that's all cleaned off, we can go ahead and put our coupler back on. And there's a there's a ball on here. It's like a spring ball. And so once it goes past this notch here, that ball goes down there and that gives you a positive, positive lock on it, so that's not going to come off it. I'm going to go ahead and take my grease gun, and I'm going to hit that, that grease fitting and then all the other grease fittings. These ones right here, you don't want to put too much on it. Uh, it's one of those instances where a little bit is better than, or none is better than too much. You don't want to be having it coming all over the place there, so this is a little bit and you'll hear it crackling so I'm gonna go around and hit all these grease fittings really quickly there may be one or two on each of these spindles and there may be one up here on the, the actual spindle itself and there may be one on the the, the, sh the uh, axle it just depends on which which type of, of machine that you have but sometimes they have bearings on them that need to be greased as well Make sure also that your three point ends are good and tight. These tend to work loose after a while as well. The next place I want to go is back here to the gearbox again. And the way these work is that here's your fill and this right here is your, your level. So you take off First thing I'm going to do is take this one out just enough so at least it can breathe. And then you're going to get onto your level. And you're going to take that plug out. It's oozing out just a little bit and it's got good color to it. There's, there's no milky white substance in it, so that tells me that there's no water in it. I don't leave this outside, so hopefully there wouldn't be water in it, but it's uh, under the barn all winter, so it could get condensation under there. So, and then just make sure you wipe up the oil, otherwise it'll attract dirt. And then we'll tighten it back up. 
you don't have to reef on it, but just make sure it's snug so that it's not gonna pop off on you and dump your oil out. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish connecting this. I make sure it's all wiped down and all the gunk. I'm gonna take my drive shaft front section. I'm gonna make sure it's all wiped down and all the gunk is off it. Now these these drive shafts on my older international ones are all square, but this one's kind of like a, a heart shape or a bell shape. It's like a bell. So you have to make sure it lines up correctly with the other mating half or it won't connect and you'll see that it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. So it goes on like this right here. It slides right in. Now what this WD-40 is for because it doesn't attract dirt and it repels moisture is I'm going to spray down inside that sleeve as I put it on. So I'll just keep putting lubricant on there. And what that does, and I'll slide it in and out a couple times. What that does is that makes sure that I have got plenty of flexibility here because the last thing you want is that stuck. And what I do over the winter time is I separate the front and the rear half of all my power takeoff equipment. And that way, when I go to start out the next year and nothing is stuck together, it's already separated and very easily reconnected so some of these power shafts they have a button you push in some you have to pull back to put on and this is one of those ones you have to pull back to put on so you have to kind of turn the power shaft a little bit so it slides on and then you got to pull this coupling back here up against the spring and shove it forward at the same time so it's a pull and push motion together which sometimes can be a real pain in the butt it's on there and you'll know when it catches because it'll be positively attached. The next thing you want to do is get yourself either some ramps. A lot of people have these ramps or jacks that are ones with four legs, not the ones with three legs. Those aren't super safe and those should be thrown in the scrap pile, so don't use those. Or if you don't have those two things, you can always just take some blocks of wood and build yourself a little Lincoln log stand under there, but make sure it's pretty stable. And what you want to do is you want to set your mower down on that securely because you're going to have to take a peek up under there and what you don't want is that thing to come down on top of your head and squish you like a pancake or a trouble light or something like that and you just want to make sure all these blades turn and so you can see these have notches on them these are gator blades and these right here do a fantastic job of cutting the grass and you want to be careful when you put these on because they look like they're on upside down but the way these work is when they turn Here's your, your knife here. This is your cutting edge on the front. So your leading edge is turning this way, not this way. And what that does is that just takes that debris up and throws it behind on these fins here that are perforated and it helps to shred the debris. Now these finish mowers, they're, they're pretty safe and they're, they're pretty rugged. And so you can see like the front of them has a, a piece of steel and it's rolled metal. So they're, they're pretty good about like hitting obstacles, but it's not a bush hog. So you don't want to go driving over stumps and everything else. But you can see there's a couple places on mine where it's bent where I hit a couple rocks in the field or a stump. And what happens is this will bend in a little bit. And then when this is turning, your blade will smack into it and you'll hear it pretty much immediately when that happens. So you need to make sure that you shut your machine off and rectify that problem immediately. And these bolts, sometimes it can be a real pain to put on and take off. And so you may need a block of wood and a breaker bar. Or you can do like I do and buy yourself a relatively inexpensive impact gun. And that just makes the job a lot easier. But you may still have to put a block of wood up against it to keep it from spinning while you're, you're putting the bolts on or taking the nuts off. And then the final thing is you want to make sure that as you're turning this a little bit, make sure that you don't have any bale and twine or wire or anything up against here, up against the bottom of that spindle, because what happens is that'll, that'll end up binding up in there and you'll, you'll blow the seals out of your, your um, bearings on your spindles, and then you're going to have junk. So make sure that you take a peek up under here before you start mowing, make sure everything's free, make sure everything's turning okay, and, and then you should be all set to go. And again, just go slow and 
uh, and easy at first to make sure everything sounds right and, and, and then you go ahead and start mowing. Now, I hope this video has been informational to you. I hope it gave you a little bit of uh, insight into taking care of your mower every year and save you from some uh, disappointment and some breakdowns later on down the road. If you haven't already, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. I'd be honored to have you on board. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.